Unfortunately, because we are out of time, we'll take only two to three questions. I have a question, because uh, all the lecturers, except me, use the Pentagon for planning the surgery. But uh, what is the alignment for you? How you align the segments? Align the segments? Yes. Do you use the uh, visual axis or the pupil? No, uh, I use the, uh, the Perkinji. The Burkinje. Burkinje. But it happened that the Pentagon mm. is not showing you the Burkinje. So that's uh, my point. Mm. My, my co-lecturers here, co-speakers, use the visual axis, and the Pentagon is not able to show you the visual axis. Is uh, uh, All the data and the maps are aligning to the apex, and the apex is the most anterior point in the cornea that in many axis of astigmatism of 10 degrees or more when you align to the pupil or to the first Purkinje using the Galilei. And, but in keratoconus patients, in keratoconus corneas, this switch in axis is 38, 45 percent of all the corneas will have this switch more than 10 degrees. And you are you, uh, doing your surgery using another center for the rings. So maybe this is one of the reasons we do not understand very well yet the uh, outcome of this uh, surgery. Question, please, for Dr. Mann. Yes. Uh, I agree with you. But in spite of this, we have good results. <laughs> I agree with you that we have to use the uh, Placido, uh, any Placido uh, implemented in a machine in order to uh, determine the Perkinje. But in spite of this, although we are using the Pentacam, uh, we have good results. I, I would also like to add that um, um, our target really uh, is to center the ring on the visual axis inside the OR, to ask the patient to look at the, uh, at the microscope light and then center the image. In regards to Mayo, Mayo ring, I do have the flexibility because the, after implanting the ring, the, the cornea remodels again, it flattens again, and this behavior as seen, it takes a month and then stabilizes. The thing I have that you probably don't have, you, you're using a tunnel, I'm using a pocket. You see, I can always readjust the, uh, and modify my result until I get the best visual outcome. And I think this is an advantage only with the pocket types of rings. Okay, can I have a small comment about that? Because in my uh, practice, I usually do, do both, Placido and Pentacam, and correlate the axis between both in addition to the manifest refraction axis. Usually I have the three aligned, uh, apart from minor disparity. But I, before I implant any ring, I do sure that they all align with each other, although I center intraoperative on the visual axis, even by marking it before I do the tunnels. But I correlate. Some cases which are exceptional with marked irregular cornea, which is highly apparated, I found some disparity. So I repeat the refraction again, but I tell the patient before I do that there is some percentage or possibility of readjustment, like removal of a segment or something like that. But as Dr. Mazza mentioned, I do have good results. By, by doing this. Can we have a chance for the audience to say their questions, please? Uh, Dr. Mann, uh, excuse me. We, for we Dr. Mann, please. Uh, there yes, is a question from the audience. Okay. Uh, you have a good number of uh, myoring, about 130 cases, but you did not hear. mention that uh, which result is better in, in central cone, paracentral cone, or peripheral cone? You just depend on the uh, K-reading. You did not uh, mention uh, the result according to the type of the cone. Well, uh, due to the sake of time, I did not go elaborate into the full details of the study, but um, the results were um, equally um, uh, powerful in all types of, of patterns. Regardless of the pattern, we did have a lot of D-shapes, central ectasias, 
post-lasic with central uh, nipple types of uh, tractoconus. Um, regardless of the shape, the cornea remodels, and we can, as I, as I mentioned in the lecture, we can uh, readjust, we can replace, and to get the final uh, best end result. And um, the flattening, as I said, um, does take a month. The visual rehab takes sometimes between three to six months. So regardless of the pattern, um, the, the results are comparable. We've had, we also did a survey on the, um, the percentage of satisfaction. Uh, Alhamdulillah, we got, we got a 96 satisfaction rate from the questionnaire of the patients that we did. I, I only want to insist on my point because we have a paper coming uh, I'm co-author of uh, Leonardo Torchetti and Paolo Ferrara in a paper with Ferrara rings, uh, but using the Galilei instead of the Pentagon. And the Q factor from the Galilei is different than the Pentagon. And this is only happened because the Pentagon aligns the Q factor, uh, the prolaticity in the apex, and the Galilei aligns to the Purkinje. So this is very important, and the results we have are good visually, but not topographically. Okay, so um, we have to, uh, in uh, intracorneal segments and in toric IOLs, we have to produce data in the same way we are going to use it in the surgery. And the, unfortunately, the apex is not able to be observe it or to identify it in the surgical field. The pupil, the central geometrical center of the cornea, or the first Purkinje, which is the light reflex, those are the points we have to use in surgery and in planning the surgeries. Any more questions? So by this, we conclude our session. I would like to thank all the speakers and the co-coordinator, Dr. Esra, and all the audience for attending. Thank you so much.